Sacred Heart is proud to sponsor Pensacola Histories in recognition of the Daughters of Charity who brought their mission of care to Pensacola over 90 years ago. Hello and welcome to our continuing story of Pensacola, North America's first place city. And today we want to talk about something that once was but is no more. And that is, of course, the great streetcar system, which operated here from 1884 until 1931. Now, if, you, if we view Pensacola into the early, in the early 1880s, it was an expanding city. People were moving out of the lower area, beginning the, what we now call North Hill, moving a little bit to the north and then to the east. And as they did that, this created problems because in those days, getting back and forth was difficult. And in, 18, in 1884, uh, something happened that changed that. In that year, a young man by the name of Conrad Kupfrian, who had been employed from, uh, by one of the larger companies in town, was sent to uh, St. Louis to do some additional study. And as he got off the train and walked out of Union Depot there, he uh, walked out in the street and there was something right in front of him he'd never seen before. Now, of course, these things had been around a while, but, he, but Kupfrian had never seen them and certainly they had not been here. And that was a horse-drawn streetcar. Now, the streetcar, as I say, had been around the, the idea of having a, a, an omnibus type vehicle pulled by horses uh, on major streets and on tracks on major streets. That had been around since the 1840s, but Pensacola hadn't seen it. Conrad Kupfrian said, this is an answer to a prayer. We need to do this in Pensacola. He came back and developed uh, a relationship with two partners, men named Cosgrove and Pfeiffer. They put down on paper a, a, a working plan, a business plan for a streetcar system, took it to the city council, and after a long debate, the city council agreed that this could proceed. And so in the eight, period 1884-85, the Pensacola Transit Company came into being, or it's right, no, I'm afraid the, the original name was the Pensacola Streetcar Company, came into being, and the original route was to run from the corner of Main Street at Jefferson going west to Palafox, then north up Palafox Street to right, and then a turn to the east to the, uh, to the L&N Depot there. And of course, uh, when that began, of course, all of these cars were horse-drawn. Uh, they could, could accommodate perhaps uh, 15 to 16 passengers. The fare was a nickel, and the cars ran a, a, a schedule 18 hours long, and the, uh, both uh, Cooperian and his partners promised that there would be a car by at least every 10 minutes during the operating hours, and so they started. It was a grand success because the, the presence of the streetcar on that route quickly promoted the building of other, other routes so that there were a, a, a car uh, routes that ran a little bit to the north of the original, then west as far as Devilla Street, south down to Villa, and then uh, a little bit later, of course, in our story, into the, uh, into the early part of the 20th century, uh, the, the Bars family uh, uh, really promoted and developed a streetcar route that ran all the way over into, into what they called their East Hill program because they were trying to run a streetcar there to help sell the real estate. Well, the cars were a grand success. People loved them. The, the, uh, uh, by the time we reached 1892-93, the, uh, the uh, a generation of electricity made it possible to electrify the, the cars within the city, and they did that. Now, to operate all of this, of course, you had to have a, a stable. The original cars had to have a stable for the horses. There had to be a, a, a car barn. There had to be a maintenance shop, and these were up on North uh, DeVilla Street. And they, you had to have a, a, a group of men who were dedicated to the work. Now, each car, of course, was operated by what they called a, a, a leader. In the beginning, they called him the leader, and then the, the man at the back of the car who, conducted the, who co uh, collected the fare. He was called the conductor. Once the, the cars were electrified, the man at the front, his name, was, his title was changed, and he became the motorman. And of course, the, the cars operated by electricity had to have a, a wire strung across uh, along the, the route, and the, the car had a, a connector, uh, a rod that uh, was from the electric motor in the car up to the electric source, and that worked uh, very nicely as well. Now, the people loved the streetcar because you know, just consider that if you were a homemaker living up in, in the new North Hill, now you had a way to get down south, first of all, for your shopping, and of course, to come south for your services on, on Sunday, and coming south for some of the entertainments you might enjoy at the Opera House or at the, in, in the public square. The, the, op, the, the streetcar was wonderful. Now, at first, the cars were relatively small. Now, by the time you get into the later uh, part of the 1890s, the cars are enlarged. Uh, they are a little more, uh, more comfortable. 
And the, uh, once the, uh, the, car, the, the company was uh, reorganized, uh, it was possible for them to have what they called summer cars. This, these were cars that weren't closed in on the sides, but literally had the sides open. They had uh, uh, running boards along the sides so that uh, if you one came along, you could simply hop on the car that way and sit in a seat, and you were open to the, to the breezes, and which made the riding, of course, a great deal more comfortable. Now, these cars were, were not large. They were, oh, 20 to 24 feet long. Uh, the seats were generally uh, covered with what they called cane. It was a hard varnished, uh, uh, fi not a fabric, but a fiber surface that was, was strong and sturdy. And the, the uh, cars, the seats were such that uh, on some, some of the cars, they could literally be reversed. So if the, uh, if the, car, if the motorman and the conductor wanted to, uh, to reroute the car, the car uh, uh, coming back and uh, with uh, people uh, looking out the window in the right direction, they could do it that way. Well, the, the streetcar itself uh, had to be reorganized. See, the company itself had to be reorganized in the early 1890s. Uh, the original company had fallen into some financial difficulties, and a new company, became, which became known as the Pensacola Transit Company, became the operators. And this company not only electrified the original system in the town, but they now built a new line, which was to run from Main Street and uh, Jefferson all the way out to the Navy Yard. Now, at first, this was not a, an electrified company, uh, railroad, but was to be pulled by small steam locomotives. And for some reason, I don't know the, the, the origin of this, but these little engines, which were generally made by the Baldwin Locomotive Company up in Pennsylvania, they were called dummy engines. And so as the new line was put in force, which ran several, time, several uh, of course, uh, trips a day back and forth, this became known as the dummy line. And the, the route of this, uh, of this line was very close to the bay and very close, ran right, right along on the, on the north side of where some of the, the, more, the uh, wealthier people had built summer homes out right along the bay and uh, right uh, where the country club, near the country, where the country club would be placed early in the 20th century. Well, with the presence of the dummy line there with regular service back and forth, some of the people said, well, now that it's so convenient to get back and forth, let's change this summer home into our permanent residence. And so the beautiful homes that were built there along the bay shore were the result of the presence of the dummy line. And of course, the dummy line itself its primary purpose, well, purpose says it really, was to take uh, workers from downtown to the Navy Yard. And also this became the freight line, which took uh, uh, building materials or other products, uh, other uh, elements that the uh, materials that the Navy needed. And this became a, a double-edged sword, if you will, carrying passengers and freight back and forth uh, with a first uh, train leaving early in the morning, about 5.30 to get people out there to work on time. And the, tr the dummy line would operate up until about 11 o'clock each night. It was a, a, f a major factor factor here, helping build uh, traffic in that direction, build and uh, open up, if you will, to, uh, to development, that area out in, in the, to the west. And of course, the dummy line operated here well into the 20th century, up until about the early part of the 1950s. Well, into the, into the early part of the, uh, of the 20th century, uh, the, the, t the route, routes inside the town expanded. Uh, people were, were, <coughs> were, were riding back and forth more and more. And by the time we get to the to the early part of the 1920s, the, the downtown streetcar company <clears throat> was carrying more than a million passengers a year, and it was an extremely profitable business. And it was doing, uh, as of course, as they modernized and they got better cars, they had more, more, routes, that they, more, more routes that they traveled. And so the people could move back and forth uh, and, and just enjoy all sorts of things from the streetcar because of the streetcar. And one of the things that, that we don't want to overlook in this, and this of course goes back to the time when, when Conrad Kupfran was still active with the company. Conrad had noticed that business was fine up from Monday, early Monday morning up until about noon on Saturday. And then of course because of the work schedules of people, business just so, slowed down and stopped. And so he looked around and said, well, other, other streetcar lines must have the same problem. How do they deal with this? And so he made us, uh, 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 did some research and came back and he had, an, he had an answer. The answer was to create an amusement park out not far from the center of the city, and to run a street line, a car line track out to it. And so that is what he did. And this became known as Kupfrian's Park. Uh, its basic location was just to the, to the west of where Baptist Hospital is today, along Marino Street and G. And there were, there were many beautiful oak trees uh, in that area. And Kupfrian carefully built around them. And he put in a race track. He put in a baseball park or baseball diamond. And this became a, a play place for people. And sure enough, people would 
come after noon on Saturday, and they would come back again on Sunday. And the park became a, a cardinal park because at this point in time, that was just about the only uh, formal recreation site that we had in the entire community. It was a, a very successful item. Now, as we move into the 1920s, two things began to impact the streetcars. Number one, by the time we reach 1925, there are more and more automobiles in our community. I'm, I haven't got an exact number by 1925, but somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 9,000 registered vehicles were on the streets here. And of course, as more people had automobiles, the, those same people would ride the streetcar less frequently. And that became a serious problem. Uh, then in 1926, the electric company, the Pensacola Electric Company, which of course had owned the, uh, the electric uh, generating service and also had owned the streetcar, they, they were sold, that company was sold, to the newly created Gulf Power Company. Gulf, of course, was, uh, was a new company. It was bringing uh, power generated in Alabama into this area, much improving the electric service that we had here. And of course, they now also had the streetcars. And for the next four to five years, the streetcars uh, continued to operate, but with every year, the, the ridership began to edge down a little bit here, a little bit there, and the Gulf Power did everything they could. They, they continued the five cent fare. Uh, they even began to sell uh, monthly tickets to people who would uh, ride more more than the, a few times they would sell a, a, a uh, usable monthly ticket for a dollar and a quarter dressed in, doing anything to try and market the service and get more people to use it and of course uh, this they people still did uh, this was a service that uh, uh, for example young people just loved to have the streetcar available because on Saturday afternoon they would uh, love to use, drive ride the streetcar from uh, from their homes in North Hill and come down into the center of the city to go to the mo to the movies on an afternoon and have a, just a good time all the way around well we come to the to the year 1929 and of course late in that year the depression the first stages of the depression struck the country and as they did month by month you could see the effect taking place here in Pensacola uh, businesses uh, began to cut back they began to reduce the number of employees they had some of the businesses closed and as of course as that happened this meant fewer car riders coming into the into the downtown area. And by the time we reached the, the middle of 1930, Gulf Power officials were looking at the books and saying, well, what has happened is what had been a, a source of profit for us now is losing money and losing money badly. So the president of the power company met with the, with the, uh, the recently changed government here in Pensacola, which had gone to the, the city manager uh, form of government we have now. Just had, This had just taken place. They sat down, they, they, threw, they sat down together and the, the Gulf Power said, we're sorry, but on the, 30, on the 1st of January, come 1931, the streetcars are going to stop. We cannot afford to keep them going. Well, Unfortunately, the, the city fathers must have thought this was a bluff of some sort because they did not act. And sure enough, on the uh, morning of uh, January the 1st, if people came down to get on their usual streetcar, there was none. There was a little sign posted on, the, on, a, on a, a, any place where the cars used to stop saying, we're sorry, there will be no further streetcars. Well, uh, as a result of that, the car, the system stopped, and unfortunately for the, the citizens of the community, the city had made no, pre, uh, no preparation for any alternative source, and of course it took months before they had even a small uh, uh, gasoline-operated bus service to take its place, but that is of course a totally different story. So the streetcars stopped. Uh, most of the equipment was sold off. Uh, I understand that a good many of the cars were sold to, uh, to cities down in South America, where they were put into play and did well there. Uh, in later times, well, we could wish that the streetcars were here. Uh, Pensacola profited greatly because if we hadn't had the streetcar, the chances are our growth to the north and to the east would have been slowed if not halted altogether. But streetcars did the same thing for Pensacola that they did for, for northern cities. It was a grand period. Uh, the streetcars were fun to ride. There were many legends about the people who ran them. But that's a story of the past and that is part of our history.